continues to be a sellout and it looks like just about every seat is taken for this the 37th annual championship of the Atlantic Coast Conference no matter what you do in the regular season you got to win it here today you got to win three games in a weekend's time and we are down to Virginia and Georgia Tech we think it's going to be a dandy of it a game and we are glad that you are along with us here on the ACC television network Charlotte's been a great host this entire week they're excited for this tournament and we are coming back to Charlotte as we near tip off for the 1990 ACC tournament. The pleasure of the call today goes to Brad Nessler and Lynn Elmore. They'll be back to bring us the call of the tournament in just a few minutes with Mike Cowan. Stay tuned. It's the 37th annual Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. And inside, it is warming up for Virginia and Georgia Tech, the number five seed and the number three seed set to do battle. And one of the big four not here today. It's Virginia and Georgia Tech. And welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler with Len Elmore. Len, the excitement is building. Uh, all the fans on their feet. This is what it's all about. Well, actually, you want to expect that everybody's going to be here cheering, not only for their team if they're one of the two boosters, but to see some good basketball, and I expect to see that in these styles, which are comparable but contrasting. Let's talk about that right now as we take a look at our Mazda game plan, brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. Today, Lenny, we're going to go right down position by position, and let's start in the backcourt, all right? Well, we're going to take a look at John Crotty and Kenny Anderson. Now, John Crotty's shooting's been off of late, but he's a great guy when you want control of your team and your offense, and he's also great at exploiting little openings. He has looked a bit tired and played a lot of minutes, but he's got to guard Kenny Anderson. That's now, a tough task. Kenny Anderson is Mr. Perpetual Motion, constantly pushing the ball up, whether it's after scores or after turnovers and rebounds. Now, he's probably one of the more savvy freshmen you'll see in NCAA play. But um, in the half-court sets against Duke, he really had trouble penetrating, except during the crucial time. He may have some problems doing some things today. All right, let's move to the two-guard spot. Brian Oliver may be the best at that position in the ACC. Well, Brian Oliver is the emotional heart of the Georgia Tech team. He more or less took over yesterday, and I expect to see him have a big game because he's going to lead. He's probably the best all-round guard in the league. Now, Anthony Oliver is emerging as a scorer, a la Richard Morgan for Virginia, but without the theater. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And um, today, he's going to be called upon the guard, Dennis Scott, who is probably the toughest guy for them to match up with. And as far as Oliver on offense, he had 23, a career high in the first game of the tournament. Let's move on to the center position. These two guys not asked to score a lot, but they do their respective jobs. They know their roles. Well, both are ex exceptional role players. Jeffries takes up a lot of space. I'd like to see him maybe go to the basket more at his size, but still, he moves the ball in offense. He's a facilitator. Malcolm Mackey, though, has done a great job as a freshman in controlling the boards during the crucial part of yesterday's game against Duke. He wiped the boards clean and limited them to just one shot when they really needed to continue to make some opportunities for themselves. And I'm talking about Duke. As you match up Johnny McNeil and Kenny Turner of the two of those, Kenny Turner is the scorer. He is uh, sometimes overlooked in the Virginia scheme of things, but he always gets the job done. Well, he's a model of consistency, and he's the kind of guy that they really call upon when nothing else is working. Johnny McNeil is a great mentor for Malcolm Mackey, but he's foul prone and needs to keep his uh, emotions in check. And finally, the other spot, Dennis Scott, one of the most exciting people in the country. Bryant Stith is as well. Well, so many things have been said about these guys. We don't have to dwell on them, but I like Bryant Stiff because he's even-tempered, never gets up too high or too low, particularly when he was in a shooting slump. Dennis Scott's Mr. Invincible. He's the kind of guy that does just about everything for you on the floor, and with the loss of that weight, he's been playing well in the post. But Virginia's had the key, and maybe they threw it away coming into this game. Great matchups all around, and we'll have the start Starting lineups from the Charlotte Coliseum when we come back after this timeout. The Coliseum, a packed house. The Virginia Cavaliers who come in 19 and 10 overall. The Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, 23 and 6. Both obviously headed to the NCAA tournament, but who will go as the Atlantic Coast Conference champion? We're about set to find out here and almost set to meet our starting lineups. Our officials today, Lenny Wirtz, Dick Paparo, and Paul Hausman, three of the best in all of college basketball. And right now, let's meet the players and join our public address announcer, John Edwards, with today's starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon on behalf of the city of Charlotte and welcome to the Charlotte Coliseum for the championship of the 37th annual Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. 
in today's championship game, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech beat the Cavaliers of the University of Virginia. Now for our starting lineups, beginning with the Cavaliers of Virginia. Starting at one forward, a 6'6 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 12, Kenny Turner. At the other forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Freeman, Virginia, number 20, Brian Stitt. At the center position, a 6'9 freshman from Bowie, Maryland, number 42, Ted Jeffries. And one guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Faison, North Carolina, number 10, Anthony Oliver. And the other guard, a 6'1 junior from Spring Lake, New Jersey, number 22, John Crotty. And the head coach of the Cavaliers is Terry Holland. Now the starting lineup for the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Starting at one forward, a 6'8 junior from Reston, Virginia, number four, Dennis Scott. And the other forward, a 6'10 freshman from Chattanooga, Tennessee, number 32, Malcolm Mackey. At the center position, a 6'9 senior from High Point, North Carolina, number 44, Johnny McNeil. And one guard, a 6'2 freshman from Rigo Park, New York, number 12, Kenny Anderson. And the other guard, a 6'4 senior from Smyrna, Georgia, number 13, Brian Oliver. And the head coach of the Yellow Jackets is Bobby Crimmins. Bobby Crimmins having the honor of being a player in an ACC championship and a coach in an ACC championship. As a player, he lost in 1970. As a coach in 1985, he won. The following season, lost by a point to Duke, so his third trip to the ACC and its biggest matchup. Well, Len and I and our crew are not the only ones in attendance today. Look at the media blitz covering the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. 48 television stations and networks, all the radio stations, and most of those do every game from the tip-off on Friday at noon right on through. And, of course, both sides of the Charlotte Coliseum floor lined with photographers. That puts the rest the old adage, <clears throat> all the adage that coaches use on players. This game's not so big. There are <laughs> 900 million people in China that don't know what's going on. I think that's changing. There's millions and millions that do, and about 24,000 are very close to it, packed in here. Virginia in the finals, you see what they've done. Three losses, the victory was in Terry Holland's second season as coach, a five-point win over North Carolina. Georgia Tech also beat North Carolina to win their ACC championship. That was in Atlanta, almost on a home court, in fact, at the Omni, as Bobby Crimmins in his fourth season defeated North Carolina by three to win the crown. And the 37th ACC championship is underway, and the ball controlled by Virginia. Georgia Tech certainly has to find a way to neutralize Brian Stiff. He's been the difference in the two wins they've had this year. Crotty off the glass. Nice defense by Anderson, but he went right over the top of it. And on the other side of it, we mentioned in the open that Virginia seems to have had the key in stopping Dennis Scott. But whether or not they threw it away remains to be seen today. So far, Oliver picks him up closely. Anderson at the point. Crotty there with him. Brian Oliver calls the play, the senior captain. He's going to work for a shot. Lost it off his foot. Turnover tech. Well, Virginia opened up in a zone. It looked as though it were a box and one with Anthony Oliver following Dennis Scott. That's the defense that has been so successful in the past two games. Dennis Scott told us after yesterday's game he was well aware that's what he'd see against Virginia today. Cavaliers with the lead and the ball here a minute in to the first half. Crotty over to Turner. He feeds in low to Stiff. Scott on Stiff, the double team there. Stiff drives, puts it over. Dennis Scott got it. I'm sure that's another way to neutralize Dennis Scott. Have him guarding Brian Stiff and have Stiff have a big day. That would take a little out of you trying to hang with Brian Stiff. Outside, off 
off the glass, Brian Oliver. And the face he makes, you know, he didn't mean to bank that one home, but he'll take it. 4 3, Virginia. This is Anthony Oliver, guarded by Brian Oliver. Try to keep those two straight for you all day long. Crowdy had a thought. Leaves it off for Jeffries. Now inside, Turner over McNeil, and a foul on Johnny McNeil. Well, we mentioned McNeil is foul prone. Uh, he's had eight disqualifications this year. Kenny Turner missed the consistency, has had some good games against Tech, but more importantly, that's a good matchup. Georgia Tech not that strong off the bench on the front line. Johnny McNeil, a great role player for this team. If Kenny Turner continues to go at him on the offensive end, uh, Johnny Turner could wind up finding himself on the bench. Turner at the free throw line, and he's had an excellent ACC tournament. 32 points thus far, but he misses his first shot from the stripe. 6'6 six, six junior out of Indianapolis. You know, he's been such a pleasant surprise for Terry Holland. He seems to have come back extremely well from that uh, debilitating and degenerate knee problem he had last year, which really had him laboring in his play. Virginia's biggest lead's been four. They're up by two here, 5-3. In the paint, they don't go to it. Back out to Oliver, and now Anderson for three. Too hard, and Stiff pulls off the rebound. John Crotty on the run. Pulls up and takes it over Anderson, and comes up short. Tech did a nice job of getting back and not allowing the penetration. Crotty just pulled up and settled for a jumper. Uncharacteristic. Scott from way out. No good, and Turner pulls it off for the Cavaliers. Both teams hustling back well on defense here in the early stages. Tech, of course, would like to run it if they had their choice. Left side, Crotty. Seems as though neither team has really found its stride on the offensive end, and that has a lot to do with playing each other so often and scouting. Second air ball in a row. For the Cavaliers as Stith misses. And Georgia Tech will have it with 17.04 to go first half, 5-3 Virginia. On both ends of the floor, each team obviously has scouted the other so well that their pet plays and things that they tried to run have been stopped cold. We'll see how the teams adjust. And another one off the glass for three for Brian Oliver. He's got a shamrock in his uniform, I think. And he's got a big smile on his face, and Georgia Tech has its first lead. Virginia moves it around well and gets it in low to Stiff. He works on Scott and he is fouled. Scott and McNeil both there. It'll be on Dennis Scott, his first. We're taking a look at this offensive set. Stiff gets the ball nicely in the post. Not an awful lot of help as McNeil peels back. But Dennis Scott is going to have a long afternoon if he's going to allow Brian Stiff to set up there on the blocks without being pushed off. And you take a look at the coach. He may be emotional, but these guys out on the floor are pretty much all business. I don't think they've been caught up in what we spoke about earlier, that emotion, that adrenaline rush. They're out here starting from scratch, playing basketball. Tied at six. Our first tie of the game as Stiff hits the free throw, hits them both, and Virginia edges back in front by one. Matt Blunden checks in to the Virginia lineup for the first time. He's done well on the boards through the first two tournament games. Oliver's the only man that scored for Georgia Tech so far in a couple of three-pointers. Scott on the baseline, looks for his shot, and it partially blocked. Mackey tips it in. Robert Mackey knows his role. Dennis Scott gets his hands on the ball. He's looking for rebound position. And a foul out front as Anderson tried to keep Crotty from penetrating and couldn't. But Georgia Tech with Dennis Georgia Scott, Georgia. Kenny Anderson, and Johnny McNeil all with one personal foul now. This comes from knowing your teammates so well. Mackey sees the shot goes up. He's going right after looking for rebound position, not even looking for the pass. Virginia had the inbound stolen by Anderson. He takes it the distance, had it blocked, and got it back. This time he tried to feed off. And it's going to be Georgia Tech ball last touched, I believe, by Anthony Oliver. 
15 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half. It's Georgia Tech 8, Virginia 7. We'll be back in Charlotte after this from our good friends at Natural Light. In the Charlotte Coliseum with 15.59 to go first half. Georgia Tech with an 8-7 lead. Virginia has had a four-point lead at one stage in this ball game, and then Brian Oliver's two three-pointers changed that. Tech right now two out of four from three-point range. Virginia 0 for 2. Virginia Cavaliers and their tournament title in 1976. NCAA appearances. That will go to nine shortly as they've earned it now with 19 victories. Georgia Tech on the baseline. Scott will inbound. All teams during this tournament have done a great job to keep Kenny Anderson from coming. That's when he's at his best. He got it into Scott who missed the shot, but Mackey answers again, and Tech has their biggest lead. Malcolm Mackey with four points. Second turnover on the Cavaliers. One of the reasons that Kenny Anderson has had difficulty penetrating is because in the half court sets, people are willing to give him his shot from outside but not let him turn the corner. Only after turnovers and rebounds has he been able to go in and penetrate and create some things good for Georgia Tech. Johnny McNeil on the baseline hits the side of the board and then picks up the foul. We spoke about Johnny McNeil and keeping his emotion in check. Here with his experience, that's not the type of foul you want to see him or Bobby Kremens wants to see him commit. You know, this is one of his rare shots, and he's not happy with it, obviously. But then he creates a, a silly foul situation for himself that puts him in a hole. He's got two this early in the game. And he has to sit down. Carl Brown checks in. So Georgia Tech, in essence, a three-guard lineup with Brown, Anderson, and Oliver to go with Mackey and Scott. It makes them smaller, but it picks up the Georgia Tech defensive intensity. That's what Carl Brown does. He's on John Crotty. Nice feed into Blunden. He'll take it. Well, he didn't know if he was going to take it or not. Couldn't make up his mind. Scott clears it off. Tech runs a bit, and Oliver pulls out. London with a rebound. Crowley pushes it up. Oliver will take the jump. Great position for Stith on the offensive board. When you talk about him being the difference, that's one area where he always excels. Inch for inch, I believe he's probably the best rebounder in the ACC and certainly the best offensive rebounder. Last year he was the top offensive rebounder in the conference. Oliver misses this three, and Scott had it bounce off his chest. And Virginia with a chance now to go in front. Well, Virginia has more or less thrown that deliberate style out the window. They're trying to push it up, playing up tempo type of game. Maybe because they recognize Tech is a little thin on the bench, and they've had some tough games and coming from behind and expended a lot of energy. Stiff for three. Won't go. Last touch by Oliver, and Georgia Tech will have it out of bounds. Bobby Kremens, he's used up his first half energy already. Just under 14 minutes to go first half. Georgia Tech 10, Virginia 9. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you. The 37th annual ACC tournament, the championship game. Mackey on the run. Tipped it back in, he's got six. If Georgia Tech is going to be successful today. They got it. They've got to get some production out of Mackey and McNeil. McNeil on the bench. It's up to Mackey inside. The freshman has really answered the call so far early in this game. He's the freshman that many times is overlooked. When you're on the same team with Kenny Anderson, that tends to happen. Well, you think about the lethal weapons three. It's Mackey and McNeil. Those are the guys that load the gun. That's right. Carl Brown picks up the foul as Crowley got him up in the air. Brown picking up his first foul. John Crotty has been very steady in this ACC tournament. There's the lethal weapon three. And look at how much of the offense those three young men are. Almost close to 80% of the regular season and over 80% in the tournament. That's just phenomenal. There's not a lot they can do without the ball as we see Ted Jeffries come back in the game for Virginia. There's not a lot they can do without the ball and it's up to the guys inside to go get it. Crowdy who had trouble from the free throw line 
yesterday hits his first from the strike. He was nine out of 18 yesterday from the line. And he hits both. He's got four points. And he cuts the Georgia Tech lead back to one. We had a chance to look at the foul situation. Georgia Tech committing five team fouls. Virginia none thus far with 13 13 left in this game. And it's a uh, half. Mackey skips it over and over the head of Brian Oliver. Turnover Georgia Tech. We've seen a few cross court passes that have gone astray this ACC tournament, especially Ralph Kitley's in day one. He put one up cheap seats in the first game. Again, the Cavaliers can lead if they score. Turner, Kirby in the lineup now, and Anderson picks him up defensively. Kenny Turner backs in on Brian Oliver. Got over Mackey off the glass. Tough shot for Kenny Turner. His first field goal of the afternoon. Normally you'd think the matchup for Georgia Tech is a lot better because they have their three guards guarding the three outside perimeter people for Virginia. But and Dennis Scott is left to guard someone who's not offensive minded. On the other end though he's got to get busy on offense. He's pretty much been left out. Oliver missed the shot over Turner. Turner clears it off. Here comes Kirby. <laughs> Terry Kirby puts Virginia back in front by three. 15-12. Feed in Dennis Scott. Nice move to get around two men and score his first field goal. Terry Kirby still as a freshman. Not really savvy in the ways to play at Dennis Scott. Doesn't know you're supposed to get a better shot than that in the ACC tourney. Here's the freshman on the other end who maybe has the same problem at times. So both Kirby and Anderson miss long three-pointers with 11.47 to go in the half. It's Virginia 15, Georgia Tech 14. Coliseum, Len, Georgia Tech has to find a way to get Dennis Scott involved. They do here. And certainly with the loss of John McNeil, what that forces is Scott to play the post area now. And that may be to Georgia Tech's benefit. Terry Kirby not really able to handle him inside, and the help in the box didn't come over in time. On the other end, it helps out because Dennis Scott now is allowed to play someone who's not offensive-minded like a Ted Jeffries, but uh, Brian Oliver's going to have to do something to stop steady Kenny Turner. Kenny Turner with that shot over Oliver has the Cavaliers in front by one, 15-14. And there's the top scorer in the ACC, Dennis Scott, who has only had three chances so far, one from three-point range. Stay tuned for the Holly Farms Players of the Game Award, brought to you by Holly Farms, a proud sponsor of ACC basketball for 14 consecutive years. Virginia, a winner over North Carolina in overtime, and then a three-point victor over Clemson to get to this title game. Georgia Tech beat North Carolina State, and then an 83-72 win yesterday over Duke. Recognize the situation. He's going to force Dennis Scott to play some defense by putting Brian Stiff, Kenny Turner out there on the front line as well. Terry Kirby with a pass that was a little too much for Brian Stiff, and Virginia with their third turnover gives it back to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's gone seven games straight without hitting 50% from the field, and yet they've been able to win ball games. Well, you win with your defense, and also when you finally do hit some shots, they come at the crucial time. Anderson for three, his first score of the day. For instance, yesterday in their 11-2 run against Duke, that's when they got hot. They were able to get the ball in transition after creating turnovers, go down and get some layups and some short jumpers. Kenny Turner again, short. Dennis Scott all alone to pull it off for Tech. Kenny Anderson's going to take another one. Semi push by Kenny Anderson, but just enough to force the Virginia defense back on their heels. Each team is led by four. Georgia Tech, this is their biggest cushion, 19 to 15. Stith outside. Bryant Stith getting in a groove. That's a two pointer. He has eight points already. Carl Brown, not known as a shooter, and they're going to sag off him all day long. Anderson got it in low to Scott triple teamed and was fouled. 
They almost forced the turnover, but somebody got a hand in there. Let's see who they call it on. Calls on Terry Kirby. And I don't know about you, but I hate being the center of attention. <laughs> and uh, Dennis Scott, obviously, he loves the limelight. Here he does a nice job. He doesn't force anything. Can't get the ball out. But he waits for the triple team to come, looking for somebody who's open. Anderson on top to Oliver. Oliver with two three-pointers today for his six. Virginia now back in the man-to-man, -man, the thing they opened the game with in the first possession. And a call a foul on Anthony Oliver as Dennis Scott was working down low, trying to get position. Virginia foul number 10. Dennis Scott and Georgia Tech recognizing this is the time for him to take advantage. He's got some smaller people playing and he's really working for position. Again, it's Scott in low this time against Turner, and he'll take a turnaround jumper. Now Mackey, another offensive rebound. This time it won't go for him. Prodi has a step on Anderson, but he stole it. John Crotty. Crotty was working all the way down Cortland trying to find the handle, and you don't do that around Kenny Anderson. He'll swipe it from you. Well, it's the pressure from the beginning that creates a situation where John Crotty's just not sure of what's going on. He takes his eye off the ball, loses the dribble, and Anderson takes over. But you recognize that John Crotty's played an awful lot of minutes, and he's called upon to do an awful lot of things. One of Terry Holland's biggest worries, I'm sure, is the fact that John Crotty's going to wind up tiring down. Tiring down. A three-pointer for Oliver, his third. He leads Georgia Tech with nine. And the Yellow Jackets have their biggest margin, a five-point cushion. They seem to be wanting to push it like Georgia Tech. Anthony Oliver, no good, and Brian Oliver, the backside rebound. Here comes Georgia Tech. Entry pass to Mackey, and right back around the horn they go. Mackey in low. Probably not a good move by Carl Brown to try to feed it at that spot. Turnover Georgia Tech. Well, Virginia did a nice job of collapsing back inside, not allowing that pass to get in there. Crowdy leaves it off for Anthony Oliver. Scott adjusted that shot a little bit and then pulled off the miss. Brian Oliver on the other end. Kenny Turner took that one home, but he also got Brian Oliver. Virginia bench leaped off their seats, contesting the call. But this is great transition play right here. Kenny Turner comes across. He gets a bit in the arm, but he certainly got all ball. He did indeed get all ball as we get another look, but you'll see his left arm come through on the body and thus the personal we talked about the fatigue factor John Crotty now getting a rest Doug Smith in for him Brian Oliver's first trip to the free throw line and he's got 10 points at 22 in the first game and 31 yesterday Crotty gets a breather the guy so important to this Virginia team because as we mentioned he's the one who controls the tempo for them. They're a perimeter shooting team without any post play. Essentially, they're living by the jump shot, and you know they may go down by the jump shot, but they won't take and stop taking the jump shot. Dennis Scott did a great job to keep that alive, and off the missed free throw by Oliver, Georgia Tech has another chance. Tech by six, their biggest lead, 23-17. Kenny Anderson, 15 footer is short. Dennis Scott got the offensive board, and he's fouled in the paint. That might be on Anthony Oliver again. Terry Holland not too crazy about the call, and Oliver does indeed pick up the foul. Second on Oliver. Yellow Jackets on a nice run of 11-2. Make it 13-2. Dennis Scott, though, the guy who has such versatility to play in the post and outside, has created a lot of problems for Virginia, including that last basket. 25-17, Yellow Jackets over the Cavaliers. 7.40 to go first half. Carl Brown almost got the steal. Stiff ran it down in the backcourt. Doug Smith in now at the point to give Crotty that rest. Virginia steadily 
attempting to stay within their team concept on offense, even though Brian Stiff is the hot hand. Anthony Oliver missed, followed his own shot, got the rebound, and put it back in. That's his first basket of the day. And in the long run, that's not such a bad idea because people do go hot and cold. But if you continue to give them the confidence when they have the open shot to let it go, ultimately they'll regain their rhythm. He had that rhythm in day one, getting 10 of 11. Brian Oliver misses the three. Kenny Turner drops it off to Doug Smith. And 25-19, Cavaliers can cut into the Yellow Jacket lead with 6.40 to play first half. Again, the Cavaliers working around the perimeter looking to get it in to the lane, and they do to Stiff. In and out on it. That one was halfway down. Here comes Georgia Tech. Kenny Anderson leaves it for Scott. Three-pointer. Won't go. Stiff the rebound. Well, I like the way Brian Stiff played that one. In and out, he could have stood there with his head hanging down, but he hustled back, blunted Anderson's penetration, and got the rebound. And it's about to make this basket. Ball that one. Stiff with 10. I can tell by the roll. <laughs> it's a good call. And the Georgia Tech lead's been cut in half. The eight-point margin down to four. Kenny Anderson somehow found room on the baseline. One of the few times in a half-court set that Anderson's been allowed to penetrate, and when he does, he puts so much pressure on your front line that you really don't know what you're going to do, stop him or seal off his passing outlet. I don't know what the word for Kenny Anderson is. Slither, maybe. He just finds openings where there aren't any. Kenny Turner in low to Stitt. He goes up over Mackey. Short Mackey the rebound. Anderson has that look in his eye. Tried to get it to Scott and put Oliver coming back one-on-one -on -one with Carl Brown. Good spin move, but he lost the handle a bit. Regains his composure, puts it off the glass. Nice move by Anthony Oliver. you got to give it to the Virginia team. Many times they'll bend, but they don't seem to want to break. They just come back at you with a good defensive play, and on the other end, an under-controlled attack. Tech trying to get it in to Dennis Scott, but he's double teamed down on the low post. Here's Kenny Anderson, long range, short. Scott there for the rebound. Dennis Scott getting his points in low. Four of his six points have come in the lane. Georgia Tech again by six. Four and a half minutes to go first half. Tech right now in a zone, hoping to slow Virginia down a bit. Virginia picked up the tempo, and it wasn't to Georgia Tech's liking, particularly on the defensive end, where they have to expend so much energy. It's been very crisp, clean basketball here the last few minutes. No stops in play. Turner off the glass. Turner, five points for Turner. Here comes Georgia Tech. Oliver spins on the other end, flies in, couldn't get it, and Turner pulls off the rebound. Not a great choice of shot by Brian Oliver. No white shirts in the lane, all blue shirts. There comes a time when you've got to cut down on those types of mistakes, especially when you have a team as consistent as Virginia. Cavaliers fans come to life as Virginia can cut it to two if they score. They approach the 3.30 mark remaining first time. 29-25, Georgia Tech. They can cut it to one if that goes, and it does. to a single point. Well, Bobby Kremen's is faced with a dilemma right now. He's got to give the front line people a little bit of rest. McNeil in foul trouble. That leaves him to go into a rather thin part of his bench here. But he also needs some people who are going to continue to stay on the boards when they're not hitting. Malcolm Mackey somehow handled that pass from Oliver and then was fouled. It's on Anthony Oliver. He has three. He's got Dennis Scott talking to himself. Two guys on him, sandwiching him. Boy, I guess. I get the impression he didn't want to be the treat in that sandwich. <laughs> Anthony Oliver is going to have to sit down with three. So right now, Virginia has Turner, Blunden, Stiff, Crotty. And Mark Cook, who's coming in the lineup. 
Malcolm Mackey at the free throw line. Freshman with six points, his first trip to the line. It's only about a 43% free throw shooter, but he's been hitting them as of late when they've counted, and that one goes. When you talk about depth and you look at Virginia, you can't really say that they're not a deep team because the guys who replace the frontline people, particularly, are all about the same types of players. You know, they don't look to the basket very much. They don't post up an awful lot, but they still play the roles. Three minutes, two seconds to go in the half. Georgia Tech by three. Back after this from our good friends at Bush Gardens. For story. And so far, Brian has the best of it with 10 points and three rebounds. And Anthony Oliver in foul trouble. Well, Anthony Oliver had the unenviable task to start out on Dennis Scott. That was switched over as Oliver got in foul trouble. Brian Oliver, though, he hasn't been hitting consistently from outside, but he's been able to mix up his game, take it inside on layups and penetration and outside with a few jumpers. Anthony Oliver doesn't have that luxury. That's not really a part of his game. Just because it's Terry Holland's final ACC tournament game doesn't mean that he is light making it uh, easy on his players. Well you know Terry mentioned that he's not going to heat up too much more for this game as opposed to last. He says that the level of heat will go up from 212 degrees to 214 <laughs> but that's still over the boiling point. That's right. <laughs> Georgia Tech by three. Those are the comments of Len Elmore. I'm Brad Nessler. This is the 37th annual ACC tournament championship from the gorgeous Coliseum in Charlotte 23,500 on hand to watch Virginia and Georgia Tech and the Cavaliers down by three just under three minutes to go in the half Friday back in there at the point Feed to London London not known as a scorer either Tech has James Lundlin in the game right now. Stith puts up a shot over Oliver. London got the offensive rebound. And just when I said he doesn't score much, he scores his first of the day. Well, that was created by Munlin getting out of position, attempting to block that shot. London stepped into the vacated rebounding position. Eddie Anderson, they're giving Brian Oliver a little too much room. But he doesn't make him pay for it. Friday the rebound, and Virginia can lead if they score. We've seesawed throughout this game. Cavaliers' biggest lead's been four. Georgia Tech's has been eight. I don't know what Mark Cook did with that shot. He hit a couple baskets yesterday, but that's out of his area. You gotta get that first one off so you feel like you're in a basketball game. He might not be in much longer. <laughs> He plays defense like that on Kenny Anderson. Anderson has nine. Well, that's a tough matchup. Cook is not ever going to be able to stay with Kenny Anderson, not in this lifetime or the next. <laughs> but what's going to happen, you see Georgia Tech is going to start pushing it up if they can stop Virginia on the other end. 33-30. Georgia Tech by three. And we have 90 seconds to play first half. Stiff in to Blunden. Mundlin in there guarding him. Crowdy trying to work for a shot. We're down to 13 on the shot clock. Now they'll have to find a way to put one up. Seven on the shot clock. Crowdy for three. That's going to be short. But Blunden picked it up on the baseline and walked with it. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Raycom and JP Sports is prohibited. We have a timeout with 107. To go, first half, Georgia Tech with a three point lead. That penetrating off the dribble whenever he sees an opening has had a lot of difficulty against Tech. Part of the reason is the two guards, Carl Brown and Kenny Anderson, are working well together. Watch Anderson come over from the help side just then after that pass to pinch in and keep Crowdy from turning the corner. And now Crowdy's forced to take a long jump shot, something that they'd love to see because John Crowdy's just not shooting well this year. Good defense by the Georgia Tech guards that three-point shot one of seven missed by Virginia so far on the day as the Cavaliers are one for eight Georgia Tech on the other hand their three-point shooting four out of eleven Brian Oliver who has three of Georgia Tech's four three-pointers feeds in low to Mullen. Mullen trail on jumper won't go and Stith has another rebound and you can just see when Crowdy has the ball, the offside guard always points towards him. 
Cook to Turner. Trying to find Stitt, but Crotty will take it from long range and it won't go again. Kenny Anderson somehow took that rebound between Cook and London. Here he comes. Dennis Scott alone momentarily. Came up short. Crotty pulls it off with 20 seconds to go in the half. Nice move around Carl Brown. Back out to Stiff. Stiff works over Brown and is short. London again in the right spot at the right time. Virginia has another chance. Turner. London. No good. Mundlin pulls off the rebound. And Virginia had about four chances and still couldn't score before intermission. So Georgia Tech hangs on to a three point lead. And the Yellow Jackets, a tough team to beat when they lead at halftime. They're up 33 30. And let's take it over courtside to Paul Cameron for halftime. Paul. Okay, fellas, thanks so much. At halftime, it is a 33-30 lead. The Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech on top of the Virginia Cavaliers. And for the first time in this tournament, Georgia Tech comes into the break with a lead, and that is uh, some comfortability factor. We're coming back to the Charlotte Coliseum as our halftime continues. We'll have the Budweiser scoreboard and more after these words from our good friends at Budweiser. To send in your choice for the best player in the ACC in 1990. Well, in addition to voting for the best player, you fans uh, became eligible to win a 1990 Pontiac Grand Prix and tickets for the ACC tournament next year. All during the tournament, we've been announcing the car winners. Now it's time to find out who you have picked as your choice for Pepsi's best of the ACC. This year, Pepsi's best of the ACC is Dennis Scott of Georgia Tech. The six foot eight junior from Reston, Virginia. An all ACC first teamer and a unanimous selection. And in 1990, Scott was the regular season scoring champion. Mr. Do It All has led the Yellow Jackets into the finals and the championship of the ACC tournament. Now let's go to Carl Worley, representing the Pepsi-Cola Bottlers, to present the award. Pepsi-Cola Bottlers are very happy to be able to present this award to the man that the fans voted as the best basketball player in the ACC in 1990. The player award goes to Dennis Scott, Georgia Tech. Congratulations, Dennis. Thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the fans for awarding me for this award. and. It feels good to be one of the elite players in the league. If you see the score, Atlanta Coast Conference Basketball on Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports will continue after these messages from your local ACC stations. Raycom Sports and Entertainment and JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC Basketball is brought to you by Mazda, Holly Farms, Lowe, Gillette and by Ford. We've got a three point game at halftime. Georgia Tech leading Virginia 33 to 30. Now, what's going to happen in the second half? Well, going back over the last 14 meetings between these two clubs, the Jackets and the Wahoos, their games have been decided by eight points or less. We expect no less before this day is over. We're excited to be here. Hope you are, too. Second half of the 1990 ACC Championship is brought to you by our play-by-play -play announcer, Brad Nessler, and our color man, Lynn Elmore. Fellas. All right, Paul, thanks. I know one thing. Bobby Kremens and Georgia Tech don't want to end up with a two-point game against Virginia because they've lost a couple of those already this year, including one in overtime. And, Lenny, if you told me at halftime that Malcolm Mackey would have more points than Dennis Scott, I would have said you were crazy, probably. Well, Malcolm Mackey has had to add some scoring simply because Dennis Scott from the outside has had some difficulty in filling up the basket and inside he draws such attention that he really can't even get his hands on the ball. Virginia's done a nice job defensively but on their end of the court they've really had some difficulty in playing the type of game they want to. Let's talk about our Mazda game summary right now brought to you by Mazda cars and trucks Mazda it just feels right. Kenny Anderson has only one assist in the ballgame. Malcolm Mackey has twice as many assists as Kenny Anderson. We're making Malcolm Mackey the star, but Kenny Anderson uh, really not himself, I don't think, in the first half. Well, Kenny Anderson, this is one of the few opportunities he's had to penetrate, particularly out of the half-court set. And he does a nice job here on the baseline. But what Virginia has done is gotten back really quickly and kept him from penetrating, not, not allowing him to turn the corner. And we mentioned Dennis Scott with difficulty. With McNeil in foul trouble, Dennis has had to step onto the post area. Here's one of the few times he gets in, and it's almost like he takes four guys 
because he had a nice step into the middle and he was surrounded by four people. And if you're talking about who's Malcolm Mackey, he's the other freshman on Georgia Tech's starting lineup, and there he is. Well, if Georgia Tech is going to be successful, they have to get some production out of either Mackey and McNeil, and today it's Mackey's turn. And so far for the Cavaliers of Virginia, we're getting uh, about what we expected out of the likes of Kenny Turner and Bryant Stith. Those are the guys Virginia has to have to do well. Well, Bryant Stith is essentially carrying his team. He's got 10 points. He's got a number of rebounds, eight, uh, five rebounds, and he's doing the job outside and inside. John Crotty, on the other hand, really hasn't gotten started. He's got no assists, four points, and one of the reasons is Virginia's been able to keep him from penetrating. Kenny Turner is the guy you mentioned that's really doing a job for them now. He's missed the consistency, and he's been able to utilize what outside shooting ability he has in getting set four jump shots when he gets his hands on the ball and he's another one who's been pretty successful but Virginia is going to live by the jumper and as we mentioned there's a possibility they may go down by it because they have absolutely no inside play at this point point. and Kenny Turner is a guy that maybe won't make the all tournament team but uh, he should be there 17 points in the first game 15 in the second game and today he's doing his job again with eight points and five rebounds as Len talked about. Let's take a look at our U.S. Air halftime statistics brought to you by U.S. Air and neither team shooting well both in the 39 percent vicinity from the field Georgia Tech if they shoot those threes at that pace that maybe is the way they'll win the ball game. Well you know you look at the field goal percentage and you wonder is it good defense or the fact that these guys aren't executing offensively I'd have to say the defense has a lot to do with it because it's taken away the easy baskets the kind Georgia Tech relies on with Kenny Anderson pushing it up penetrating and dishing off and the kind Virginia lies on in the half court set Friday every once in a while sneaking past the first wave and dishing it off. Let's take a look at those individual statistics that we've been talking about you see Brian Oliver Georgia Tech senior leader leading the Yellow Jackets in double figures Bryant Stith likewise with 10 points and Dennis Scott with only six at intermission the point guards Crotty and Anderson there's what they've done so Kenny Anderson has the better of it right now and John Crotty knows that he's got his hands full with the freshman from New York in the Big Ten Michigan State over 10th ranked Purdue and the Spartans who are kind of the surprise of the Big Ten win the Big Ten title Michigan of course the defending champions Gene Cady's Purdue Boilermakers had played so well all year and all of a sudden the green clad Spartans jump up and take it all in the Big Ten. We're set to start the second half Georgia Tech with a three point lead and they are 15 and one when leading at halftime. Dennis Scott again looks over kind of winks at us. He has fun no matter how much pressure is on him. And Georgia Tech inbounds to start the second half. We want to look for Georgia Tech to try to get Dennis Scott started early. Brian Oliver is the man that starts early. He's got a dozen. Brian Oliver throughout this tournament has essentially taken things into his own hands. He's not going to leave anything to chance. Anthony Oliver on the other end. Crotty and now loaded Turner. Brian Stiff trying to get free. It's Oliver who takes the three and he's got it. A good patience against a sagging Georgia Tech defense. Just a little passing game outside forced the defense to change a little bit. The Georgia Tech comes down to have a look at Virginia's defensive set. Kenny Anderson will put it up in a hurry. No good on the long range jumper. And the Cavaliers with a chance to tie. Crowley runs it up. Stiff works to the baseline. Goes over a double team. Shot it too hard, but it'll be Jeffries who pulls it down on the baseline. That I believe is the seventh offensive rebound for Virginia. And when you shoot as poorly as they do, you need every opportunity to get the second chance shots that you can. Crotty to Turner and right back to Crotty. They play catch before Turner takes the jumper that comes off the back of the iron. Dennis Scott has his seventh rebound of the game. Only six points for Scott, but seven boards. Georgia Tech with a two point lead. 35 33 here in the second half. ACC title game at the Charlotte Coliseum. Dennis got off a pick. No good. And a whistle and a foul on Georgia Tech inside. Either McNeil or Mackey will get this one. 
that'll be on Johnny McNeil. That'll be three on McNeil. So he got two early in the first half, and it forced Bobby Kremen's hand into a three-guard offense for quite a time. And now McNeil already with his third personal. And you look at McNeil's stats, and you, you feel that, well, his loss is no great loss, but it just puts Bobby Kremen's in such a hole as far as substitutions are concerned. Cavaliers down by two. Time game. Well, you wonder if Johnny McNeil was thinking about that last play because he was awfully late in getting back to Kenny Turner after helping out inside. I stand corrected. That was a three-quarter for Turner and Virginia leads. Kenny Anderson. And he answers with a three of his own on the other end. Georgia Tech back in front by two. The last time Virginia led before that three-pointer was 15 to 14 in the first half. Three minutes into the second half. Uh, Georgia Tech clinging to a two-point lead. And Crotty's going to have to reset it, so Georgia Tech doing their job defensively. But what Virginia's trying to do is figure out what type of defense Georgia Tech's playing. It starts out in playing an area, but then as men go to the top, people follow them. It's almost as though they're sagging on the block. Crotty gets open, but doesn't get the shot, and Dennis Scott has another rebound. He got away with a little nudge there. Brian Oliver is alone, three-pointer. Rattles up. Jeffries pulls it down for Virginia. Here comes Trotty, it's three on two. He pulls up from 17. Good decision, John Trotty pushed it up. The two defenders back, sag back to pick up the two cutters, and Trotty took what the defense gave him. We've got a tie game, 38 apiece, Georgia Tech and Virginia. Almost four minutes into the second half. Kenny Anderson decides to take a three, and he has back-to-back -back three pointers. And the freshman has 15 points. Turner kicks it back on top to Oliver. Jeffries, that's his first shot of the day, I think. It comes up short. He got his own rebound. He'll try it again, and he's fouled. Ted Jeffries, who didn't shoot at all in yesterday's semifinal, has back-to-back -back shots there the second time out. He's fouled by Brian Oliver. Well, I'll tell you, Jeffries... Is a, is a master at economizing here. He's not going to get too many, but when he gets the opportunity, he's going for it. Good pump fake there. He gets uh, Mackey off his feet. Brian Oliver down low on the slap gets the foul, his first. You know, that would add such a dimension to the Virginia offense if Jeffries got more active offensively. I think this may be a start, though, recognizing that he's able to turn and face, even though he gets a shot block across the foul. As we said yesterday, Arnley doesn't even look to the basket. It's just an immediate reaction of getting ready to pass away. Johnny McNeil over on the bench with three fouls. Ted Jeffries, the freshman out of Bowie, Maryland. Got his first free throw of the day. And the Cavaliers of Virginia cut the Georgia Tech lead to 41-39. We've got 15-41 to go in the ACC title game. The team that can pull up off the transition and hit the jumper, Virginia can do that too, Len. Well, in this case, it may be a question of playing the percentages. Normally, in a three-on-two situation, you want your defenders in tandem with someone pointing to the ball. But John Crotty's only shooting 38.5% from the floor. Georgia Tech has the lead thanks to their three-point shooting. Anderson and Oliver with three each. Scott, you see, is 0 for 3. And only once all year has Dennis Scott gone a game without a three-point shot. Uh, that's been good, and that was against Wake Forest when he was playing with a bruised shoulder. Three-point field goal shooting so far in the ball game. Georgia Tech with a two-point lead, and there's the man we're talking about, Dennis Scott, who has made a living from outside that arc. Brian Oliver, Georgia Tech's senior captain, who has waited and waited for an ACC title game. He's got it today. There's 1541 to go, and the freshman Kenny Anderson has been so superb all year for Bobby Grimm and Jello Jackets. And Brad, with about 1540, 1541 to go, this is a point where you want to look for the signs of fatigue. Both these teams played.
two games in a row tech having to had it and spend more energy in coming back in the two games that they played maybe showing a little sign of fatigue it starts in the legs a guy like Dennis Scott you know you don't shut him down very often from outside sometimes he shuts himself down depending on his physical uh, well-being at the time but these are little signs here when you look at the jump shots and they start falling short Georgia Tech Dennis Scott held 28 points in the two games in the regular season against Virginia. That's right at his average per game. So the Cavaliers have done a nice job on him this year, and they've done it again today so far. Scott working in low again. And Georgia Tech's in their three-guard offense. Oliver on Oliver, and Brian almost lost it. Got it back. Works the baseline and was fouled. Brian Alvin may have dribbled into trouble, but was bailed out that time. Dribbles into a crowd rather than making a decision to pull up or reverse the ball and reset. He had enough time in the shot clock. And Jeffries picks up his first foul. So Georgia Tech, fresh 45 on the shot clock and a two-point lead, 41-39. Dennis Scott working that baseline, trying to get free. Kenny Anderson almost threw it away. Brian Oliver saved it. Tech looks a little confused right now. And they end up giving it back to Virginia. And Dennis Scott is just thoroughly frustrated, as we mentioned before. They have been playing a boxing one on him. They played a little man, but most of the time, particularly when he was inside, it's been that boxing one, which allows Virginia to always have one man on him wherever he goes and double team when he goes in the box area, which is essentially the lane area. They're trying to dig a hole out of that box. He picks up the personal foul and gives it back to the Cavaliers who can tie it if they score. Stiff works for the 15-footer. Brian Oliver clears it off for Georgia Tech. Brown out to Oliver. Scott's going to take it from a mile away. There's his first three. That's the tough part about guarding Georgia Tech. You want to cut off Anderson's penetration, but then after you've sagged in the middle and done that, you've got to flare outside and pick up the perimeter shoot. Anthony Oliver drills one on the other end. Oliver has five points this half and nine for the game. Georgia Tech's biggest lead, eight points in the first half. Virginia led early by four. Georgia Tech's biggest cushion, five points in this half. Mackey double teamed in low. Almost threw it away. Last touch by Jeffries or Stith, however. Georgia Tech will have it on the baseline. And the two freshmen glaring at each other. When Mackey was in the post, he was mouthing the words. You could read his lips to Kenny Anderson. Anderson, give it to me, give it to me. Then he gives it to him, and Anderson wants it back. And Malcolm decided he'd give it back to him at the last minute, but got it deflected. One half of that 500-pound package of would-be trouble comes out. Jeffries goes to the Virginia bench, and London comes in for him. This time, I guess Mackey didn't ask for the ball. Under 20 on the shot clock. Brian Oliver worked around a pick, got free momentarily. Off-balance jumper's no good. London tried to save it and stepped out. And we have Brian Oliver down. Brian Oliver, who worked for a, about an eight-footer and didn't get it. I didn't see what happened after the shot. Brian Oliver in a lot of pain right now. It's tech trainer and doctor out to have a look. It was on the rebound. Got it in the hip or the back or even be the ankle. Maybe even the ankle, right? When he came down the first time, he attempted to go back after it. He really couldn't give out the effort. And this will deal Georgia Tech a major blow. He's had a bad ankle all year. In fact, both ankles have been bad. And at one stage of the season, Oliver went out and missed the majority of the first half and had his ankle iced for a while and didn't look as though he'd come back in. They retaped it. And he came back in to play a brilliant game. Whether he can do that or not, as you look at the look on his face, it doesn't look like he'll be back in very soon. Georgia Tech with a three-point lead, and they've lost their leader. Anderson.
Anderson, air ball. And Anthony Oliver picks it up for Virginia. And a whistle and a foul. London and Kenny Anderson got tangled up. And the freshman is going to pick up his second person. We expect the loss of Brian Oliver to hurt offensively, but defensively, with um, Anthony Oliver, John Crotty, and the capabilities of a Brian Stiff on the front line, I'm sorry, in the backcourt line for uh, for Virginia, creates a matchup problem. Dennis Scott goes back and he has the guard Brian Stiff now. And Anthony Oliver just picked up his fourth personal foul. That could definitely change his outlook on the basketball game. Now it evens it up. <laughs> That's right. Just that quickly. Both Olivers are going to be out here in a moment as Kirby's going to check in for Terry Holland's Cavaliers. Although Terry Kirby does have some outside shooting capabilities, he's a big lift for Virginia because when he gets in, he's gone and revved up 100% back and forth up and down the court to the point of almost looking out of control. But you don't want to stand in his way when he's driving the basket. <laughs> Most linebackers and cornerbacks around college football don't want to get in his way either. Of the tailbacks on the Virginia football team, Terry Kirby. Tech still with a three point lead as we approach the 12 minute mark remaining in this one. Paul Brown's going to be forced to look at the basket now. He looked at it, didn't take it, got it to Anderson who did and missed it. Crotty pulls it down, two on two. Crotty and Stiff on Brown. And Anderson and Stiff won that battle. Change of directions in mid flight down the court is something that. Very few forwards in college basketball can do well. Georgia Tech absolutely has to get Dennis Scott loose somehow now. Scott for two. He's got 11. With Brian Oliver on the bench, it's down to lethal weapon two, not three. Georgia Tech by three. 46-43. Yellow Jackets in front of the Cavaliers. Georgia taking their zone. Virginia's attempting to spread them a bit. Here's Terry Kirby. Crotty feeds down and Turner on the baseline. Crotty penetrates. Blunted takes the shot. Rattled it off the front. Dennis Scott has another rebound. He's got nine off the board today for Georgia Tech. Johnny McNeil in close. Georgia Tech runs it back to a five-point lead. McNeil hasn't been out there very long, but when he is, he has some impact, whether it is scoring on the short jumpers or just his presence defensively. He's got to stay in this basketball game for Georgia Tech. Kenny Turner has a shot blocked by Scott. Scott gets it back and brings it up. a little too hard. Good move for Scott, but he can't make it pay off. 48-43, Georgia Tech by five. Stiff for three. No good. Scott is in double figures and rebounds. And he seems to have picked up his intensity more. He wants the ball a lot more. Kenny Anderson misses. And Kenny Turner with the board for Virginia. Now Scott, I think, all of a sudden senses Brian Oliver's not here. I've got to come to the forefront. Bobby Kremens is telling his players to think out there. I think on that last shot, recognizing that Scott has the hot hand and is more animated, he'd like to see them go to him a lot more. John Crotty alone on the baseline. Too hard. Malcolm Mackey pulls it off the backside. Here comes Georgia Tech, three on two. Scott's going to pull up for three. Trying to get his own rebound, but Bryant Stiff scoops it up for Virginia. Pace is picking up. Here's Kirby. Both teams running and gunning. Kirby got it back. And Brian still says, let's calm down a little bit. Although that may not have been such a fortuitous time to call that because Stiff was wide open. It sure was. Seven missed shots in a row between these two clubs right now. But they're not going to quit trying. <laughs> Turner ends that drop with a three-pointer. Kenny Turner's third three of the day, and it cuts the Georgia Tech lead to two with 9.22 to go in the game. Georgia Tech 48, 46 over the Cavaliers. Will Brian Oliver be back? We'll find out after this from our good friends at Budweiser. 
22 to go. Georgia Tech clings to a two point lead, but Virginia just won't let him get very far away. Well, this is the man for Virginia at this point in time. They haven't really been getting much from anyone except Brian Stiff and Kenny Turner. But when it comes down to crunch time, it's going to be Brian Stiff. Obviously, for Georgia Tech, Dennis Scott being shadowed by a man in this box and one by Virginia has got to play with his teammates and vice versa. They've got a pick for him to get him free and pass him the ball when he's open. And Virginia has really bottled up Dennis Scott all season long. He's shook loose for five field goals. There's 13 tries today. He played every minute of the first game against North Carolina State in the quarterfinals. He played 39 minutes against Duke yesterday and was dog tired when it was over and he's been in there the full way today. Georgia Tech's going to send Brian Oliver wants to come back in. Is Bobby Kermit's going to let him? Yes. Eventually. And the senior captain in front of the scorer's table trying to rile his teammates. It's Anderson, Mackey, McNeil, Brown, and Scott for Georgia Tech. Turner, Blunden, Stith, Kirby, and Crotty for Virginia. Dennis Scott double team on top. And you can see Terry Kirby is the shadow for Dennis Scott. Johnny McNeil almost threw it away. Kenny Anderson somehow got into the backcourt to get it. Dennis Scott from downtown. No good. London the rebound. Dennis Scott was almost beyond the pro three-point line. He's starting to get maybe too anxious for that shot. And Kenny Anderson picks up the foul on the other end. That's his third. Terry Holland in his final ACC tournament. After the coaching year is over, it's on to Davidson as athletic director. Now look where he's shooting from. That's the NBA three-point line, and he's a foot beyond that. That may be a little bit of anxiety on Dennis Scott's part, not getting his hands on the ball and shooting it every chance he has. He may have to play with his teammates a little bit, have confidence to know that if he gives it up, he'll get it back. Brian Oliver back in for Georgia Tech. Tech with a three-guard set now as Malcolm Mackey sits down. Tech goes back to their zone. Virginia looking for Stiff. It's hard to get it to him. Georgia Tech has things packed in right now. Stiff is directing traffic out there, wanting the ball to come to his side so he can get position. He got position finally, got triple team, kicks it back to Kirby for three. He missed it. And it'll go out of bounds. Georgia Tech ball with the two-point lead and 8.16 to go. You can see neither team is exactly burning the nets. And yet we've got a great game going. 48-46 Georgia Tech. With Brian Oliver back in the game, could we have a replay of yesterday when Brian Stiff banged in the nose by Dale Davis comes back into the game. As soon as he gets in, he hits a crucial three-pointer. Oliver does it. Scott picks it up and puts it in with one hand. 13 for Dennis Scott. Tech by four. That stiff play gave Virginia a big lift and helped him go on to beat Clemson. We we'll see what Oliver can do emotionally for his team. Showing the way here with some guts. That's what Bobby Kremen says this 1990 team is built on. He's got three great perimeter scores, but a lot of guts, he says, has got them their 23 wins. Kenny Turner on the baseline. Worked around McNeil and missed it, and Johnny McNeil pulls it off. Heck wanted to push it up. Oliver, skip pass over to Carl Brown, who hasn't shot today. <laughs> and I don't think anybody's really worried about him, no matter how many fakes he gives. Didn't even change an eyelash on the Virginia defender. Somewhere along the way, he might have to take one, just to keep him honest. Anderson, in and out. Kirby, way up high for Virginia. Here he comes by himself. Leaves it for Bryant Stiff. Short, and Carl Brown got the rebound. And finds himself a popular fellow in the backcourt. Jump ball, possession, Virginia. Carl Brown's face tells you all, at least how he feels. Got himself caught in a bad position. And actually put it on the floor. May have bounced it out of bounds. So either way, it's a break. Got swallowed by Blunden and Stith, and with 6.48 to go, Georgia Tech hangs on to the lead, 50-46 over the Cavaliers of Virginia. 
see him. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you with 6.48 to go. Georgia Tech up by four. And the last time Georgia Tech, and the only time Georgia Tech was able to win an ACC tournament championship down beyond the in 1985. Bruce Dalrymple then with the jumper. Bruce Dalrymple today, an assistant coach on the Georgia Tech bench. Quite a prosperous looking Bruce Dalrymple. Hasn't been playing much ball, as you might be able to tell. You're chuckling because it's five <laughs> years ago and more than five pounds ago, isn't it? Hey, well, you know, it happens. The best <laughs> and, and don't mention any names. Okay. As we said, Georgia Tech has won five of those seven games in which they've shot under 50, and that's the story again today. But they're making the ones they have count, and they're holding to a four-point lead. They've been able to put together runs on the offensive end after stops defensively. London. Back out to Oliver, who's playing with four personal fouls. Under 20 on the shot clock. Crotty can't seem to shake Kenny Anderson. Kenny Turner outside. Three pointer won't go. Ball still loose. Johnny McNeil scoops it up for Georgia Tech. That's one of the things, Brad, yesterday as you and I sat and watched Georgia Tech play Duke. A lot of things went their way, but the important things went their way because they wanted to. And that's getting all the loose balls, getting their hands on things in the passing lane and knocking them away. And we seem to have that same type of sequence going now with Georgia Tech getting their hands on everything. Brian Oliver worked the jumper over Crowley, couldn't get it. Cavaliers can cut it to two if they score. They just can't put it in the basket. And Virginia can capitalize again if they had someone who can step in and get some easier shots rather than the 18, 20 footers that they're taking. Maybe this guy, Kenny Turner. No good off the glass. Got his own rebound. And it's stripped. I think that Scott got the hand in there. Here comes Carl Brown. Once again, getting the hands on the ball and putting together a run. Dennis Scott from about 23 feet away. Exactly what happened yesterday. Now, if they can put together a run, it would duplicate it. That's how you win when you shoot forward. Just got to put the makes together. Steph tries a three and he can't get it. And Scott has another rebound. A dozen rebounds to go with his 16 points. The ACC's top gun getting it done today. Tech by seven with under five minutes to go. Georgia Tech content to use a little clock. Now this is where Georgia Tech could use Brian Oliver, particularly from the outside. Oh, brother. Nice timing. Dennis Scott is the shadow. They can't get him the ball. You got to spread that defense and loosen it up. And that's why Brian Oliver is so important at this venture. The biggest lead of the game is Georgia Tech's by 10 with 420 to play. Crotty into Stiff. They double team on him. Stiff got the shot off anyway. Didn't go for it. And there's another one of those loose balls that goes Georgia Tech's way. Getting their hands on it. Creating difficulty for Brian Stiff. Although Brian Stiff is very aware that he's got a score. And that time he took two guys, which maybe he shouldn't have. Virginia's gone over five minutes without a basket with 4.07 to go. They're in trouble. We'll be back after this from our good friends at Budweiser. Georgia Tech with their biggest lead with just over four minutes to go. Well, not only does Georgia Tech need Brian Oliver on the court doing the things such as that from the outside, but he also provides the emotional lift coming off that uh, sprained ankle. He gets pumped. As Johnny McNeil said yesterday, this guy is the heart emotionally of this team. He exemplifies the mental toughness that they've had to exhibit throughout this tournament in coming back from deficits and winding up winning. You see the run by Georgia Tech in the last four minutes. And the Cavaliers have had a long dry spell without a bucket. And when you don't shoot well, as we mentioned before, and it bears repeating, if you play good, consistent defense, get your hands on balls, create turnovers, which Georgia Tech's doing, and the scoring output you do, you put it together in runs, you have some good, um, good luck. Brian Oliver's consistency, consistency is been unbelievable all through his Georgia Tech career and it has continued through this ACC tournament. We are under four minutes. Georgia Tech 56, Virginia 46.
Georgia Tech now will move it around. They work it down, 20 on the shot clock. Virginia certainly has to come out and play man as they are now, because now it's their turn to create turnovers. Anderson's three. The kid has three field goals in the second half. They're all three-pointers. Now he has 18 for the game. Kenny Turner fouled as he shot in the lane. Johnny McNeil got him on the follow-through. That's four on Johnny McNeil. Had a chance to see the concerns with the uh, Virginia Brain Trust. On the other hand, we take a look at Johnny McNeil right now. There's Terry Holland who has to feel that he's going to have to get out there and start gambling, have his team gamble a little bit, something that Virginia's not really known for. They're playing consistently, but they don't like to go out and gamble unless they have to. Bobby Kremens, on the other hand, is figuring that if he's going to hold this lead, he's going to require Johnny McNeil still in the game. He's got Malcolm Mackey on the bench ready to come in, but it's limiting Virginia to one shot and still playing that good defense that's going to help him. The looks of concern from the Virginia bench. This guy's had a whale of a tournament. Missed the second free throw, but Stiff follows it and can't get it. And McNeil, luckily for Georgia Tech, maybe he did stay in there. He got the rebound. Three twelve to go and Georgia Tech with a 12 point lead. And Brian Stiff again no block out by Dennis Scott but Stiff always finds a way to get his hands on it but you see McNeil that's the importance of having him in there because he's going to go up and try to clean that glass for them. Kenny Anderson now they'll pressure him in the backcourt but he is a tough guy in the corner. Oliver double teamed on the trap. Ball handler. And this is the game where we talked about. Virginia knows they have to trap. They know they have to anticipate now. And they just don't have the quickness to really be successful at it. And John Crotty, close on Brian Oliver, picks up the foul. And Georgia Tech will inbound in the front court. Cavaliers not over the limit with four team fouls. And if you look in the ball handling areas, the Brian Olivers, the Kenny Andersons, and the Carl Brown, they're just too quick for Virginia. Johnny McNeil's about the only guy that is not the greatest of ball handlers in the world that's on the court for Georgia Tech. Dennis Scott can dribble a bit as well. This guy's a wizard. Worked it in. He's fouled by Blendon. And Kenny Anderson about to go to the free throw line. We're well, certainly not going to take it away from Kenny Anderson. What you want to do, I guess, is to force him into the big people and hope you can come up with a missed shot or a block shot. And Bobby Kremens is living. Blocking foul, yeah. Because he thought it was in the act of shooting. And from that replay, it looked as though Kenny Anderson's intent was to shoot. Now, before that, John Crotty had grabbed Anderson, but maybe it was a late whistle. I don't know. If the foul was on London, it should have been a shooting foul. At any rate, Georgia Tech will have it on the baseline with 2.37 to play. And a 12 point lead. And Lenny Works makes a call on the far side. I'm not sure what that one was. Tech will bring it in again. Well, that last foul was on London, and they called a blocking foul. He's trying to made his attempt to the basket, which is interesting. Scott and Oliver, and London and Neil got tangled up, and another foul on Matt London. We got to try every trick that you've got now. It's just about down to that time. Well, their next foul puts them over the limit. So they've used the two they had to give. Carl Brown fouled. Either Kirby or Stiff, they were both there. It'll be out Kirby. And that'll send Carl Brown to the free throw line. Carl Brown is a free throw shooter, 64% free throw shooter. He had all kinds of trouble his junior year, about the first half of the season. Then he seemed to hit a groove, and he upped his percentage over the course of last season. 
and he's been fairly consistent this year. The first bench point of the tournament for Georgia Tech. You know they haven't really expected any production as far as scoring from their bench. The guys they bring off the bench are there primarily to play defense and to be part of the support group. Georgia Tech by 14, their biggest lead. Virginia needs some threes. They need them quickly. That one short. Battle for the rebound. Blunden gets it. Oliver now outside. Virginia will have another chance. Their third three in a row, short. Again, they keep it alive. They'll get four opportunities, five opportunities, and Oliver finally gets one. Anthony Oliver's two-pointer makes it 61-49. Georgia Tech with the lead with 2.07 to go in the ballgame. The Yellow Jackets that close to an ACC tournament championship. Provided by Hilton. Virginia had only two field goals in the last 10 minutes, thanks in part to Georgia Tech's defense. And Brian Oliver, who went out earlier on a bad ankle, back in there hobbling around and trying to provide the leadership to this Georgia Tech team. Well, Tech's defense outside, always having a hand in the Virginia shooter's face and getting their hands on balls in the passing lane, which has taken opportunities away from Virginia. Tech will inbound in the backcourt and full court pressure coming from the Cavaliers. Brian Oliver will be the trigger man on the baseline. Into McNeil, and he is fouled in the corner. <laughs> well, between Kirby and, and Matt Blunden, Johnny McNeil was kind of bounced around like a little bit ball. It'll be Kirby that picks up the foul. Could have easily been Blunden. Anna Scott and Kenny Anderson get some words of wisdom from Bobby Cremens. In his ninth year as Georgia Tech coach and the second winningest coach in Georgia Tech history behind only Wack Heider. You take a look at Kenny Anderson and this being his first ACC championship as a freshman, his first tournament, and there was a tendency to believe that because he didn't have any real stellar performances over the last two games, he may come out here and try to overcompensate and do more than he's capable of. But he's played pretty much within the Tech offense, and when he was open, he wasn't hesitant to shoot it. This guy right here has done a well of a job in getting on the boards. A lot of times, he's been the only Tech player on the boards. He's come up more successful than not. Second one comes out on McNeil. 62-49, Georgia Tech. We're under two minutes. Anthony Oliver works in for a tough shot. And he's got 13 points with 155. Terry Holland wanted a foul on the shot. And he's down to one timeout remaining. Georgia Tech has their full complement of timeouts. All the Yellow Jackets are hoping for is the next one minute and 55 seconds to hurry. They lead by 11. Bobby Kremens, I'm sure, telling his team, get it in the hands of our free throw shooters. <laughs> well, they're certainly going to have to play keep away here. They have some people who are pretty decent from the line. Dennis Scott, almost an 80% shooter. Brian Oliver, 72% on the year. And Kenny Anderson, 73%. Well, these guys just keep doing it. 80% of the offense from Dennis Scott, Brian Oliver, and Kenny Anderson. And that's about on, on par with the rest of the tournament. They're set to become the first trio in ACC history to all average 20 points or more. And, of course, Dennis Scott, the ACC's leading scorer, at about 27 and a half a game. Kenny Anderson actually needs two more points. Over the season, he's averaged 20 points a game. He needs a few more points to keep that up there. Georgia Tech with Scott, Oliver, and Anderson, the aforementioned, Carl Brown and Johnny McNeil. That's... There are five that will come out against the Cavaliers of Virginia. Georgia Tech anticipating what could be if they can hang on to an 11 point lead. Terry Holland knowing that there's another game to coach but not another ACC tournament game to coach. Georgia Tech has 30 points on their 
shot outside the arc today. And you know the Cavaliers need some more of those and have only four. Kenny Turner has three of them. One fifty five to go. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you at the Charlotte Coliseum a sixty two fifty one Georgia Tech lead and again the Cavaliers of Virginia will put all kinds of pressure on Georgia Tech hoping to force a turnover and if not hoping more than likely that uh, Johnny McNeil or Carl Brown would be the guys to touch the ball. Well, Johnny McNeil is shooting seventy eight percent from the free throw line so you wonder though you throw those numbers out the window in less than two minutes because there is a bit of pressure. But up 11, the pressure is all on Virginia. And a foul on Crotty. And Carl Brown, the man trying to shake loose to get the inbounds pass, so he'll be the recipient at the free throw line. And Carl is two out of two from the line today. And if some people are wondering why that wasn't called an intentional foul, because the ball wasn't inbounded, and John Crotty just pushed Carl Brown. It's the referee's judgment whether that plays within the course of playing basketball and the two had gotten tangled up in Friday's attempt to cover him. So that was within the course of play. Carl Brown, senior from Leicester, England. He'll take it. Brown, all three of his points as Carolyn Cremens looks on. Bobby Cremens trying to win an ACC title. is helping the cause. There's Carolyn Cremens. We saw a young coach at Appalachian State go to Georgia Tech in his fourth season at an ACC championship, and he's on the verge of another with 11, uh, 147 to play and a 13-point lead. London, another foul. Terry Holland's lone ACC title in 1976 and they beat number 17 North Carolina State number nine Maryland and number four North Carolina to shock the college basketball world in attaining that goal. But the 16th edition of his Cavalier team is going to come short in the ACC tournament championship uh, unless they pull a miracle here in the next one minute and 47 seconds. Johnny McNeil two out of three from the line he's got four points he's gotten some gigantic rebounds throughout this tournament doesn't get the second one and Virginia now will have to hustle and blocking foul on Carl Brown will send John Crotty to the free throw line well Carl Brown in the immortal words of Yogi he knows what's going on here and he's going to still stay out there and play some basketball he's not letting up at one bit and he's not giving up a thing as we see here real tough defense against John Crotty real tough defense against John Crotty Crotty got a pretty good forearm in there and we'll go to the free throw line Crotty with only six points today He had 21 in the first game against Georgia Tech and 14 in the second. So he has not been the offensive force that he was in the regular season games between the Cavaliers and Yellow Jackets. They're one of the fiery point guards in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And boy, the conference has some. Porciani and Crotty and Anderson and McQueen and Cash and York, right down the list. King Rice. There's some good ones. When you talk about the fact that you play a team three times and lose to them twice, maybe the third time's a charm. And in games this close, you have to find out what the difference is and then attack that difference. I think Georgia Tech did a nice job of stifling Brian Stiff pretty much throughout this game. He had been the difference in the first two games, hitting a clutch, clutch shot in the second game at the buzzer, and in the first game, getting about 30 points. Kirby sits down with a personal and Kenny Anderson will go to the free throw line what you just said about stiff well he certainly is true he had a field goal early in the second half that was his 12th point and he hasn't scored since and this young man looking for point number 19 doesn't get it Virginia with an opportunity on the miss here's stiff can't get the three Carl Brown somehow got the rebound on the taller Cavaliers but he walked with it. Been very few turnovers really in this game. 
the shooting hasn't been that great, but the defense has been tough and the ball handling for the most part has been excellent. What's important for Georgia Tech right now is not to be fearful of the free throw line. Paul Brown gets possession. Just hold it until you foul. Johnny McNeil couldn't get the rebound. Stiff got it and scored it. And he's fouled. And this is one of the reasons why Paul Brown was playing such tenacious D. They recognize that only when the buzzer blows can they relax. Johnny McNeil is going to foul out with four points. But he's done a whale of a job on the boards. Here's another look. They're getting a rebound. McNeil just not fortunate enough to get both hands on it. We got a little careless in reaching. And even the coach's wives don't like some of the official calls. Do they? <laughs> I don't know. I think she may recognize that, you know, you stop the clock here, Johnny, and you're giving the Cavaliers a chance not only to score without any time passing by. Malcolm Mackey picks up a miss by Stith. But a chance for them to set up their defense. It didn't turn out that way as Virginia misses another free throw down the stretch when they need it, as they did yesterday, but they didn't need it. So we are at 101 remaining in the game, and Dennis Scott will go to the free throw line. That foul was on Mark Cook. Terry Holland still very much in it. And Dennis Scott, the ACC's leading scorer, has 16 points today. A double double, as you see. That's a season high in rebounds for Dennis Scott. So much speculation about Dennis Scott. Will this be his final ACC tournament? I'll tell you one thing. He's dispelled a lot of the myths that he's a one-dimensional player today. Not having the ability to get the ball and get off the shots that he wants. He still buckled down and played pretty good defense. And rebounded well. Georgia Tech leaves Mark Cook alone. And... That cuts the Georgia Tech lead to 11, 67, 56. Virginia actually called the timeout and really didn't huddle, but they needed it to set their defense. And immediately, they foul Brian Oliver in the backcourt. So Terry Holland's out of timeouts with 51.9 seconds remaining in this ACC tournament championship, and Georgia Tech with an 11-point lead. And you look at Terry Holland, one of the strengths of his coaching ability you saw right there and when Anthony Oliver came out is his way to instruct and also lend encouragement. I mean, he recognizes this season may go on for Virginia. It may not. But nevertheless, he's lending encouragement as these kids come on and off the floor, even in a situation that's very difficult emotionally for them. Brian Oliver had the shot roll all around and finally threw, and he has 16 points. Oliver, who wears that black armband on the left side for Danny Pounds, his former AAU coach at the Ben Hill Recreation Center in Atlanta, who passed away in the summer. And he's some kind of kid, and he's had some kind of tournament. Hits both free throws, and it's Tech by 13. Virginia's got to keep putting it up. And Mackey is fouled in the backcourt after pulling off yet another rebound. That's what I meant by not being fearful of the free throw line, by gaining possession and let the rest of it take care of itself. You know, Malcolm Mackey did try to get away from the double team, didn't try to get away from the foul, just made sure he had possession. Terry Holland still coaching with 45 seconds to go and down 13 points. And Malcolm Mackey, who's had an 8.8 .8 rebound game, a freshman out of Chattanooga, will go to the free throw line for Georgia Tech with 45 seconds to go. I guess after that last huddle, Brian Stiff got the instructions from Terry Holland. Go in there and make four three-point plays and stop them four straight times. In 45 seconds. And we're still down one. Mackey has showed a lot of calm for a freshman through this tournament. The Yellow Jackets on the verge of a celebration. Malcolm Mackey doesn't get the second. Turner pulls it off for Virginia. Stiff. Three-pointer is good. That's the first one. Still down 11. And we're just over a half minute to go. Now under 30 seconds. Oliver and Brown. They do 
a dribbling act out here. Kirby picks up the foul, trying to get the steal from Carl Brown, and that'll be it for Terry Kirby. And now the Georgia Tech fans starting to celebrate. 23 seconds to go, and an 11 point Yellow Jacket lead. will go to the free throw line where he's been perfect today. There's Johnny Kremens, Bobby's older brother, and there's the Silver Fox, whose father, Bobby Sr., passed away this year, and he was the guy that Bobby called after every ball game, win or lose, throughout his coaching career. I know how much he misses him. But what a gift this Georgia Tech team is about to hand to Kremens today. Because they're going to win the 37th ACC championship. The Yellow Jackets do it. Georgia Tech, an ACC champion. Second ACC tournament title for Bobby Kremens, Terry Holland's final ACC tournament game. He'll coach again in the NCAAs, you can bet. But a happy Bobby Kremens and a happy Carolyn Kremens, and the Yellow Jackets win it 70 61. Paul Cameron, let's give it to you. Thanks, guys, and great job, and congratulations to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and all their fans. And we got to commend Terry Holland and the Virginia Cavaliers for a tremendous run in this tournament. They've given all of us such a great thrill. It is not the last for Terry Holland. No, no. His team appears destined to head on to the NCAA tournament. I'm sure there'll be great representatives in the ACC. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech, faithful, a big alumni club, club here in the Queen City, Charlotte, and uh, all the fans who've come into the Charlotte Coliseum. They are excited about Bobby Kremen's second ACC championship in three trips to the finals. The lethal weapon three, Scott, Oliver, all double digits with a 70 to 61 win for Georgia Tech over Virginia. They are cutting down the nets, and our Dan Bonner is courtside with a happy celebrant. Thanks very much, Paul. Dennis Scott, congratulations. A super effort throughout the tournament. Thanks a lot, Dan. It feels real good right now. We came here, we fought hard. We knew they were going to come in this jump defense on me and Brian and Kenny. And everybody played together as a team. Money came off the bench, played well, Johnny and Malcolm. I mean, I got to commend them for getting me open, setting screens. This feels good because we, all year, it just feels good right now. Congratulations, Dennis. Let's go to Brad Nessler with Bobby Cremens. All right, thank you very much. And along with us, the winning coach of the ACC Tournament Championship, Bobby Kremens. Bobby, you look like you're a little bit of a daze. I am a little bit of a daze. You know, it's amazing. 20 years ago, I lost one of the biggest things in my life here, an ACC Championship game. And these kids gave me something back today. I wish my college coach, Fran McGuire, was here, but about five or six of my teammates were here today. And it brought something back. But we really played inspiring basketball. I said during the end of the broadcast, I know your dad's looking on somewhere, isn't he? Yeah, Brad, he is. Congratulations, Coach. You. I love you, man. Brian Oliver and Bobby Kremens, the senior captain and the ninth-year Georgia Tech coach who has another championship in the family of Coach Kremens looking on. That entire row, relatives and friends, and the freshman who cuts the nets. Kenny Anderson, what a game for the freshman as Georgia Tech wins it 70 to 61. Paul? Brad, thanks so much. And that freshman gets to wear that net for a while, a nice new bit of neck dress as the celebration continues here in Charlotte. We'll be right back. Georgia Tech has just won it 70 61 over Virginia. Stay with us. Our Holly Farms players of this championship game, a pair of Kennys. Kenny Anderson for Georgia Tech and Kenny Turner for Virginia. Turner with 15 points, 10 boards. Kenny Anderson, the freshman point guard, 18 points, and dishing out four assists. The celebration continuing here. And interestingly enough, in the home of the Charlotte Hornets, uh, these Bobby's Bees have come on to win the ACC title for 1990. On behalf of Brad Nessler, Lynn Elmore, 
Bob Rathman, Dan Bonner, and Terry Gannon, I'm Paul Cameron, thanking you for being with us this entire weekend. We look forward to seeing you next year right here in Charlotte for the 1991 ACC Tournament. So long, everybody. And with the buzzer, Georgia Tech wins the ACC tournament for the first time in five years. Good evening. I'm Josh Thomas in tonight for Mark Pettit. And I'm Carmen Burns. Now that Tech has won, the celebrating begins. And we begin tonight with Randy Waters and the highlights of today's win, Randy. First time in five years, and at that time they had guys named Mark Price and John Talley. And hey, they were supposed to win it. But this team kind of floundered at one point. Lost two times to Duke, two times to Virginia in the regular season. As I said, they were supposed to win it with Price and Talley and company. This year, the Jackets caught fire at the right time. And while they have to think about uh, rekindling the fire for the NCAA, they should also savor what they did today over in Charlotte. It was a tight one, and their senior leader, Brian Oliver, down with an ankle injury, had to come out for a while. Bryant Stitt for Virginia with this shot. Makes it 44-43. Tech Virginia looked like they were really closing in. What did Tech do? They didn't fold. They went to work. Dennis Scott with the jumper right there. He had 18 in the game. They decided to swarm on defense. Did they ever swarm? And they put the game away. Oliver came back in, gave him a big emotional lift. He had 17 points. Freshman Kenny Anderson, 18 points as well, with a three-point jumper right here. He makes it 59-46. Jackets win it 70-61. to And Bobby Kremens, who was in this tournament as a player 20 years ago, gets net number two as tech coach. He had to like that. He really had to oh, like yeah. that. Art Ekman was standing by, and he'll be with us later in sports live from Charlotte. All right, Rand. Well, as you might expect, Tech fans around the Atlanta area are just a little bit excited about the win. We visited one local watering hole right after the victory to hear from some armchair basketball experts. Years, and this is just great. It's great. It's just it's unbelievable because we normally don't do very well in tournaments. And this year, I'm like, we made it all the way to the end, and we're really going to pull it off. We're really going to do it. We almost drove up this morning for the finals. However, we ended up celebrating so much last night, we couldn't get ourselves out of bed to go. And, of course, Randy will be back in a few minutes with more on the win, including a live satellite report from Charlotte. Well, I could have sworn our walls were rattling today from the they cheers were. that were coming from all of the Yellow Jacket fans around It was the rats. We have rats. The rats. But That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, a lot of Jacket fans yeah. up. And, you know, and coaches are funny. I'm sure uh, Bobby Kremens is worried about getting this team back down to earth, but mm -hmm. I'm sure he'd rather have that situation than worried about getting them back up. Georgia Tech got a gutsy performance from Brian Oliver and the usual from Kenny Anderson and Dennis Scott and its supporting cast. It all added up to an ACC title for the Jackets this afternoon. Georgia Tech with the shot right here can't get it to go and where Virginia runs back down the other end. The lefty John Crotty pulls up, stops, hits, it's 38 all. Now, Dennis Scott, usually from outside, did some damage right here on the boards. Gets the rebound off of Oliver's miss, puts it back up in the lane as Georgia Tech went on a run. Now, Oliver was out for a while, that ankle bothering him again, but he came back and the jumper right here was part of a 17 to four run as the Jackets began to pull away and just kept on going. Bobby Kremens and Terry Holland shaking hands at the end as the Jackets win at 70 to 61. Carolyn Kremens savoring ACC title number two net time for Brian Oliver and his teammates. 
28th as they cut him down in Charlotte. Jackets win it by nine. Art Ekman's been there all week for the tournament, standing by live in Charlotte, where I'm sure uh, quite an outpouring of emotion. Art? A lot of emotion. Randy, the uh, intensity of the ACC tournament always lends itself to an exuberating and exhilarating experience, no matter which teams are playing. What made this final a little different, of course, was that it was the first one in ACC tournament history that a North Carolina team did not make the final game. So that made for an interesting aspect. Uh, when a team has experienced so many close calls and so much emotion that the Tech team has throughout the season, the final horn like this, when it sounds, creates a mayhem based on happiness. This net's going to my college coach. Uh, this is a great feeling. It's, a, it's unbelievable. Art. Did you really believe this team at the beginning of the year could come this far? No, I did. Truthfully, I did it. But we got to get ready for the next one. I don't know what words I can explain. It just feels great. I mean, personally, from not making third team to making first team, from losing two years in a row in the first round, it just feels good, Art. Me and Ken, when we first came in, early in the season, before the season even started, we said if we get past that first game, we was going to win it. And sure enough, it happened. I knew we could do it. You know, we played everybody down to the wire. It's just certain things didn't go our way. But this weekend, everything went our way, and it just feel great right now. Can it be a better feeling right now for you as a senior? No, no better feeling. This is the best win I've had all my life. I told my mother before I left that uh, I was going to come up here and come back with the championship. And I just want to tell her, Mom, I love you. And, you know, I love my mother, and my father, and my sister, and this tournament is dedicated to them. That young man, of course, providing the most emotional moment uh, during the game when he re-injured his ankle where they had a stress fracture. He went to the dressing room, then reappeared and just gave the team a tremendous emotional lift. He finished the game and then won the most valuable player. A trophy for the entire tournament to uh, Brian Oliver. Uh, Brandy, it's, it's been a, an emotional, high-strung type of three days that uh, is pretty hard to surpass. Okay, Art, what do we know? And I know it's early. Have they said anything about what the ankle uh, might do as far as Brian Oliver is concerned this week heading into the NCAA? Well, as he showed, he's pretty gutsy on the floor, yeah. regardless of how it feels. And he's had this all season long, so it's not something new to him. I, I think it will hurt, and it will affect him a little bit more in the next week because it takes time for this type of thing to heal. And it won't heal in this uh, interim period before the NCAA tournament takes place. So he'll just gut it out like he has for most of the season. I don't think it's any worse than it has been before, though, Randy. Ironically, incidentally, uh, a player who was on the last Georgia Tech ACC Tournament Championship team is warming up on the boards right behind me here in the Charlotte Coliseum. John Sally, he's with the Detroit Pistons, of course. They're playing the Hornets here, tip-off at 7. Okay, thanks, Art. And we will know at 11 tonight, of course, where Georgia Tech plays in the NCAA and where Georgia is going in the NCAA. Bids come out at 6.30. Okay, SEC. Georgia Tech turning out to be a big winner. Oh, to say the least. They are the best trio you'll ever see on the offensive side of a college basketball team. Dennis Scott, Brian Oliver, and Kenny Anderson make all things possible. The Jackets win the ACC tournament 70-61 to over Virginia. Bobby Kremens, his first ACC tournament title in five years. Kenny Anderson had 18 points. There, the three-pointer in the first half. Then it's Kenny Anderson inside. Look at him take it there. For Virginia, Bryant Stiff closing the gap. Here, the home run with the three-pointer. The Cavaliers tie it with John Crotty as he buries the J. But Tech answers every time Virginia comes back. Dennis Scott, 44-38. Brian Oliver, then down with an ankle injury, went out for about three and a half minutes. He was able to come back in. Stiff cuts it to a one-point Yellow Jacket lead. But here come the Jackets. Anderson to McNeil, and Tech is up by five. Trouble for Holland. Dennis Scott makes it 53-46, and here come the Jackets. Brian Oliver gives them a 10-point lead, 70-61. to Bobby Kremen's wife feeling the emotion of what truly was a wonderful day. They're 24-6. and Get ready for the NCAA. Here's Bill Hartman in Charlotte. The thing to remember here is that Virginia won both regular season games. But then when it comes down to tournament and Buzz is in the picture, the Jackets turn it on and blow them out. They could have cut the nets down with five minutes left today. That's how much of a sure thing this turned out to be, thanks largely to senior Brian Oliver, the tournament's most valuable player. First of all, I thank God for the opportunity to be here. Um, my mother, my father, my sister, you know, I, I told my mom when I came up here, I was playing this tournament for her. And mom, if you're watching, I love you. Oliver, you can't say anything about Oliver getting hurt and coming back just like he did at NC State. Oh, beautiful 
game, Bill. They love Oliver, and they love Crimmins, as in Bobby. Was he excited or what? Bill, I'm really excited. I'm really proud. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, I lost in this city a big game, but um, I wish my uh, college coach was here. <laughs> You're as emotional as I've ever seen. Uh, I'm just really excited. Um, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And Kenny Anderson, Tech's fabulous freshman. This is why he left New York. You feel great, man. I, I, I had something my dream about. I didn't know it was going to happen. Something my dream about. You think you'll be back for another ACC? I don't know. I'm just going to you know, keep playing hard and just go for it, uh, finish the season up, then think about what my options. Scott may decide to leave Georgia Tech and go to the NBA. But for now, the Jackets are ACC champions. And in just a few minutes, they'll find out who and where they will play to begin the NCAA. From Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm Bill Hartman, Channel 5 Eyewitness News.